Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzow. Hello, folks. Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity. It's a show about weirdos. Doggone it. My name is John Boy. It is John Boy time. I am your host, John Francis Fahey. Joining me as ever is the pinnacle and perfection of perversion. It is Aaron Joseph Pita showing off my beer koozie for you folks watching at home. Dude, I love sliding a tall, cool one straight into your face. Yeah, this is the closest you're going to get to pegging me, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll see you in court. Now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> To your right, my left is handsome Matt Brousseau, the Cape God, Gabe God. Hello, hi. How are you, fellas? <laughs> we are uh, returned after a, a ho- an extended holiday break, uh, mm-hmm. and then my birthday. You know what? It's a holiday. That's what's yeah, happens. That's yeah. What I, like, I like. I like it. getting extended too. Um, <sighs> uh, we um, we had a good time. We certainly did. We had a nice time. We sure did. It was a real, real nice time. Aaron performed Spider-Man Graduation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tiny, a few, just a couple of flourishes added to it. but A um, couple, yeah. It felt good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, really uh, getting those juices flowing. Mm. Um, maybe I'll do another one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. I'll have to uh, put, put, put a little pen to paper. Yeah, yeah. Just go nuts, man. Yeah. Mm. You know, just like, uh, you know, just really get out there. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to get yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get to hear the thing about um we did on Patreon. Patreon folks, extra episode a week, $5 mm-hmm. a month. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh but or more. Matt Matt was, uh, or Aaron was out with a with a toothache. Oh, I had a yeah, I had a good root canal. He yep. did. The same thing NFL they just says out with a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I said? Yeah, no, that's what the NFL that's what they say about NFL injuries. Oh, really? Yeah. He's out with a tooth? Yeah. Well, like dating? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tooth fairy. Yeah. <laughs> um we uh we played some some of the voice messages I got from your neighbor Taylor mm-hmm. were pretty funny about mm-hmm. not, about not coming to my birthday party. Yeah, and um he he did this like long apology that was that you can't really understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, he kind of does what what uh, we were talking about. Dana Carvey does, where he just like trails off and starts laughing at the end. <laughs> <laughs> because I said back to him, I gotta play it again. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I said back to him, uh, you know, I was like, I appreciate your message. You know, I was like, um, put this behind a paywall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to play the whole first message. Good. Um, <laughs> cause it's, yeah, it's, it's too good. Um, but the last one I said back to him, uh, let's, uh, let's get together and, uh, shake things loose, which, you know, he, and he's real into hyperbole. Yeah. Like loves, ri- loves nicknames. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All nicknames with that guy. So he hits me back with this. Shit, sorry. Whoa. This guy's getting a lot of... Everybody wants to talk to him now. No, I'm, well, on, I'm, me. I'm on the Bluetooth systems. Do you plan for the neighbors or what? Yeah, what? What systems? Uh, yeah. I don't let you connect to shit in here. He's out with a Bluetooth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I t- yeah, I say let's uh, let's get together and shake things loose, and he hits me back with this little this little number. And just to piggyback off your let's shake things loose comment, I just really want to fucking tee off and get all the way after it. You know what I'm saying? Just really fucking score one for the home team. You know what I'm saying about it? Anyways, I'm done with all the riffraff, the BS mainstream media narratives. I'm just ready to... (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> just fucking tee off. Uh, I, I love tee off. Tee off. Really get after it. <laughs> really score one for the home team. <laughs> the fuck. I love. He cool clearly shit. just like ripped. Yeah. A yeah. huge hit. Oh yeah. yeah. Playing top golf or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also in that episode, Aaron, I was really sad you couldn't be there because a really important subject came up. Porno? The subject, and, and then, then it was started, it was, I think, our, 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 our Discord. Also, if you go on the Patre- uh, Patreon, um, uh, the members, uh, they have a little Discord. 
<laughs> and so <laughs> after, after we talked about the Transformers for, for a minute, oh yeah, yeah. Then I, I was talking about um, <laughs> what if there's one that turns into a Sibian? <laughs> and so the Discord, the Discord members were trying to make up names uh, for what it would be called. What do you think it should be called? What's what, Sibian? Is it a Decepticon or is it an Autobot? You make you can make that yeah. up. I didn't I didn't specify. Mm. You have to think about that. Uh... Like Vibatron or Oh well, yeah, I was gonna say something like uh um Viborbulator. <laughs> um Saddletron. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. We'll have to do some thinking. Peg. <laughs> yeah, peg, yeah. Very good. Um so yeah, uh folks, check out the Patreon. Um I hear Sibia is great this time of year. It's oh, beautiful. beautiful. Very hot, humid. Beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Just a right about humidity. Yeah. Too bad. I um I do want to talk today about um Doug Kenny. Ah, of the, the Lampoon. Oh the hall of the National Lampoon. Mm-hmm. Um I gotta take a little detour at first, of course. Of course. Um because that's uh, my styley, you know what I mean? It's a bit of hey. a futile and stupid gesture. <laughs> I got that book when I was here. Uh, Joe and Jesse came for my birthday. It was very sweet of them. I love mm-hmm. them. And uh, Joe, and Je- Joe and Jesse uh, made these koozies. Made the koozies. Printing. That's right. Uh, it's koozies. got uh, John's uh, likeness. Yes, yes. It's, it's uh, a picture of me. Uh, a likeness? Well, scre- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it says, it's John, not me. John Boy is 40 in a very... Um, uh, what would you call that? Adventure comics, uh, would, vintage would, uh, font. Yeah, 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 yeah. Board, borderline. Uh, but I would say borderline EC comics. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That's fair. Well, it's, it's real nice. That's a nice likeness. <laughs> it is. It's a good picture. It looks a lot like him. It does. Yeah. I just somebody took a picture of me like doing the face next to the picture of me doing the face, <laughs> and I. Do we got to get pictures yeah. of that picture? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, and then uh, make copies. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um. Um, so we're going to be talking about Doug Kenny, um, and, uh, the, uh, the National Lampoon, his creation, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but before that, um, I got a a real, real fascinated with this side story of a friend of his, um, who had just a, a a very, uh, like, incredibly odd life. And it's, it's really interesting because it touches a lot of, majorly different areas of entertainment you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um and then and then it has just the most insane ending uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. but there was this guy um that Doug met at Harvard and college <laughs> that's right Aaron and <laughs> and um he uh he was um they said like him and the group of friends like going like one of the one of the friends um, the, uh, that would go out with them, she was like, "You can't, you I, like." She's like, "I just can't recreate the, like the dinner discussions." Uh. Like she was like, it was just nutty. Like these are like really fucking out there people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and <laughs> and Doug already is 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 you know um, uh, out to lunch, majorly out to lunch at dinner. But Peter <laughs> Ivers is. is the one uh, I want to talk mm. about, um, and he was from uh, Brookline, Massachusetts. It's a place, and um, he uh, he started. Uh, um, he he was really um really playing um harmonica was like the kind of like main thing he chose as like his instrument of choice, um, and uh, he, S- a subtle choice. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was really strange, you know. Um, yeah. it'd be cool if he like just wore that, you know that that thing. That looks like oh, yeah, the little like, harness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it has braces. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just wear that around all the time. Yeah. Oh, um, have you seen my harmonica? Yeah, yeah, I'm a harmonica player. Um, But so, yeah, he, uh, you know, it, like around the time he knows he knows uh, Doug, I guess, in 69, they'd both be in Harvard. And um, he, he puts out a, a a release called Night of the Blue Communion. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And it's a harmonica album? Uh, I think it, there's like there's there's uh there's there's also singing and, and stuff too. Uh, there was a Sri Lankan jazz person uh who who sang on it. Sh- sh- Sri Lankan? Yeah. Okay. What yeah, I, I was like, well, I was. Uh, yeah, I was a Sri Lankan. Yeah. Sri Lankan. Yeah, Sri Lankan. Oh yeah, that's some that's some neighbor of Sibia. Yeah, that's some. Yeah, slurring. Sri Lanka. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I that see. That was a great character in Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, so he did like one of the singles was like a cover of a Marvin Gaye song, and uh, it was like you know you know going around the charts and um, going around. It, you know, it was like doing okay. Um, he did like the original kind of like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar sort of thing. It was the first one of those musicals, rock opera. Um, yeah, it was before Godspell and Jesus Christ Superstar, and it was called. Um, Jesus, a passion play for Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was broadcast on TV um, and he signed with Warner Brothers. Two more albums. Wow. Um, so this it, was it funny? No, no, oh. no. no. <laughs> oh, OK. No, no, no. Jesus, a, Jesus, a passion play for sounds American very. Oh, oh, I mean, that that. Yeah, that. But I'm, I'm saying like the music wasn't like, oh, it, the it, music wasn't. Yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. And so he did. He did this thing. Um, then, then he knows David Lynch, and he does the the Lady in the Radiator song on a racer head, wow. which is like the most famous song from it. It's called um, "In Heaven," uh, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, basically, in heaven, you know, you know whatever. whatever. No, in heaven, a the, passion play. It's also American. known as the Lady in the Radiator song, <laughs> but it's uh, it's like in heaven, everything is fine, or something like that. Is is how the lyrics go. And uh, then he starts scoring films. He does the first Ron Howard film, which is called oh. Grand Theft Auto. Mm. And, um, you know, he, he's doing like TV shows like BJ and the Bear and stuff. Um, but David Lynch was a friend. And then also, you know, Doug Kenny's a friend. And um, he, he's he's doing um, he, I, I, at uh, Doug Kenny's funeral. He played Beautiful Dreamer on harmonica. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was he was close with Belushi, right? And he did he did this uh this this EP with uh the Swans uh, singer. Swans were this crazy band in like the early '80s New York um, that were just like in, incredibly intense. Um, and the singer would just absolutely destroy himself on stage, like slamming his head against the stage and stuff like that. Like oh. real, 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 real wild. Um, Never did the same same show twice, you know. I'll tell you that. Yeah, um, every song was a swan song. <laughs> and he got tapped to um, to do this. Uh, it was called New Wave Theater in L.A. Hmm. And it was you know right around that uh, late seventies, um, early eighties time. And there was a TV station KSCI, and um, they had this program called Night Flight. Um, and it was uh, the USA Network was just starting, mm. and he um, he they made him the host, and he would have bands like uh, Angry Samoans, Dead Kennedys, Forty Five Grave, like it was like all this like punk shit that never would have got on TV otherwise. You know mm. what I mean? I know one of those bands. <laughs> um, Suburban Lawns. Uh, I know what those are. The Plugs, yeah. Um, Plugs, <laughs> Slugs, the Outlets. Uh, and then, and then <laughs> electricity. But then he's also writing songs that are going to be recorded by like Diana Ross and the Pointer Sisters. Wow! All right, super fucking weird, man. Man, he's a songwriter. Uh, yeah, and, and but scoring too, you know, like mm. films or whatever. And um, man's a score writer. Yeah. Um, really, uh, when I was scoring one for the home team. That's <laughs> <laughs> And um, he would have those guys come and guest host. Uh, Doug Kenny and David Lynch. Uh -huh. And David Lynch, you know it's bad when David Lynch says it was a madhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and so, in 1983, he's found bludgeoned to death in his apartment. And it's, 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 uh, it's not far from, like, Grand Central, Sta uh, Grand Central Market, mm -hmm. uh, in the last bookstore, like, Third Street or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was real bad back then. And he, yeah. he just kind of was like trying to live like, you know, some kind of artist life or whatever. And, yeah. um, he probably also wasn't rolling in money because like, like his first album from 74, they said like in 2010, like it's way better now. Like he was just way ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And but then it was like it was one of these things where it's like the cock up to end all cock ups by the Los Angeles Police Department. No, you don't say. Where they start letting like everybody in the crime scene, <laughs> like punks and actors, oh. and yeah, like you know, and they're hawking loogies everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. can you believe the guy lives like this? Pink. Yeah, they were like, and so forget a corner. It's a 
artist. So, uh, so one of the things they knew is that he was hanging out, doesn't mean fucking, with Harold Ramis's wife. Oh, cool. So Harold Ramis gets brought in and held for the murder. He, okay. What? Yes. And he's going like, what the fuck? Your wife's fingerprints are all over this scene. And, um... They're focused here on the genital area. <laughs> and the harmonica. What's your favorite part of the genitals? But, um... Yeah, uh, he so then there, there was there was another like a uh, musician that he collaborated with, uh, collaborated with, and they would argue, and sometimes you get pretty heated, and that guy took a, in front of the police took a bloody sheet from the crime scene, and they were like later on they're like what and he's like I got rid of it nobody wants to see that or something like that and it's just like. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I left my bloody sheet here. Anyway, I gotta and go. And the guys, the guys from like Fear, the the band that played SNL, mm-hmm. and you can see this like link with Belushi then to Fear and Doug Kenny and, mm-hmm. and like how that world kind of circum navigates around this one guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, Fear famously played uh, SNL, and uh, they invited a bunch of punks and they trashed the hallways. Um, <laughs> among them were future members of the Cro-Mags and Minor Threat and. Got to start somewhere. I think Bad Brains people were there. It was nuts. Um, just, I mean, yeah, wh- like homeless youth just r- like <laughs> running down the halls of Thunder Rock. Homeless youth, good band. Yes, <laughs> that is one of the better ones. Now, so so they ever solved, they ever, well. No, they never solved this this uh, this crime. They even arrested and got, and then, <laughs> they even arrested a guy and he was found guilty. Still didn't solve the case, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But after, after, um, the, like, yeah, they wrote a book about him. About Peter Ivers, and they uh, then like was, you know, I think they opened the cold case, the LAPD, out of total embarrassment, and um, doesn't mean they're going to do anything. Um, Crack open a case of cold. <laughs> and it doesn't embarrass me. Tee off on it. <laughs> yeah, talking about really scoring one for the home team. Really, really crank one out. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uncork on it. <laughs> I love uncorking. Yeah. He would, um, he, oh man, I fucking forgot. He would open for Fleetwood Mac and come out in a diaper and just get booed. Like, awesome. Like, that's amazing. Coming out playing harmonica in a diaper and nobody understands, like, with this weird performance what, art. What the kind fuck of thing. was Fleetwood Mac thinking? Yeah. Well, they're thinking, hey, man, more time they're, they're, gonna, love, they're gonna love us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But everybody loved this guy, you know, and he just had this crazy circle. Um, <laughs> yeah, he um the uh the song by the way from from uh Eraserhead, Bauhaus, uh the Pixies and uh Devo have all covered it. Lady in the Radiator? Yeah. And uh In Heaven it's called. In Heaven or something or whatever. I think it's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's I thought it was but it was In Heaven but then it's Lady in the Radiator song, yeah. but also you see you'll see it called In Heaven In Heaven Everything is Fine. Uh-huh. That's why I was being dismissive. It's funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so then, he, I mean, he knew this guy uh, called Acid King, who uh, who gave the. Um, Is that like a mattress salesman type of guy? No, he was the guy that gave uh, Jagger and Richards the drugs they were arrested for in '67. All right, cool. Um, must have been good. So it's just like this whole this whole crew of people is coming and stomping through this crime scene. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the LAPD are like just letting it happen. This guy in acid. Which is just like, what the fuck is that? Like, fuck it? Like, it's we don't care? for the course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, if they're not going to fuck it up, someone the, else. What, late 60s, early 70s? Yeah, they're like, hey, if we bring in all the actors, maybe we can be on like a, uh, a chips or some procedural. shit. Yeah. Chips or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, hey, who wants chips? <laughs> <laughs> who wants to watch chips? <laughs> hey, hey, the game's on. Hey, bring out some chips uh, and put that that bloody sheet down and catch oh. our crumbs. <laughs> He's an artist. Probably doesn't have cable. Um. Yeah. He and this is this is even wild too. Is that the the thing that was that was he was bludgeoned with was described as a circus hammer. Hema. Yeah, like a like a big old no, I, like, I mean, kind of like a clown. Like a, I was gonna say it's like squeaking every time. Yeah. It is. 
<laughs> Look, he <laughs> dies funny. <laughs> hey. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Well, I mean, he probably came out doing his whole diaper and harmonica <laughs> shit, <laughs> and somebody was like, oh, I'll one up you. Yeah. Fucking who framed Roger Rabbit murderers? A circus hammer? Yeah. Isn't that maybe, is that one of the, maybe it's like one of those giant Oh, mallets? yeah, like you gotta hit the, the bell? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm guessing. You oh. think it made the bell? Yeah. <laughs> it rang his bell, I'll tell you, you that free, bell. You get a free sheet. <laughs> you get, you get a free, hey, I won this. I really ring this guy's bell. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'm talking about really trying really to, fucking, uh, really fucking, trying to lay down the mallet, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me take a good stab. How strong am I? A whack at it. I'm about doing a serious wallop here, you know? <laughs> yeah, they, I don't know if wallops used it. I mean, feed this guy a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, anyway, um, there's murder. Well, they let Ravis go, obviously. Yeah. He went on to a wonderful career. Hmm. But, uh, uh, fucking Ghostbusters? Yeah, yeah. Not exactly a lightweight. <laughs> 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 and, um,. Yeah, uh, it was it was really tragic. Uh, fucking super, 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 super fucked up. But then even when they uh, had enough money after the book came out to uh, to have a private investigator, they were just like, all of the evidence is fucked. Like every, it's all mm, yeah. the Tostinos everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like fucking whatever, you know. <laughs> fucking yeah, it's like it's probably like yeah, fucking. <laughs> John Belushi's DNA on some fucking yeah. some <laughs> clown scoops, shoes, some <laughs> Tostito scoops, <laughs> full of Coke, yeah. <laughs> little chocolate frosted donuts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, it leads trail directly yeah. to the, yeah. the, the fucking, Chateau Marmont. Is there an Olympic, okay. Olympic champion here? Some fucking condom the Acid King had on, and <laughs> fucking oh god, <laughs> you know. Um, but the guy that left with the sheet, Ramus was like, that's the one guy I could never rule out. He's like, yeah. oh, I don't fucking know. But the other guys uh, from Fear were adamant that he didn't do it. Um, but, I mean, leaving with shit, really not a good look. No, from a crime scene? Unless you're the dead body. And you threw it away? Yeah, I got rid of it. Whoever man. thinks that, like, oh, I'll just clean this up? Uh, this is what, I'm, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It was my sheet. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean, borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> and if the guys from Fear are the only ones sticking up for you, like... Yeah. Not a good look. Um, the fear frontman, uh, Lee Ving, famously played Mr. Body in Clue. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Wait, but that wasn't the guy that killed him. No, maybe, no, no. Maybe, and every, maybe like all his lines were dubbed. Him. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Remember all his lines were dubbed? Wait, like, really? Weird, like, yeah. Lee Ving. Yeah. Mm. That's why they, they wanted him, just for the name. Lee Ving. Mr. Body is Lee Ving. But obviously not the voice, because... No, not the voice. No. Must have fucked up his voice with all this. He was this. probably saying fucked up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's like, yeah, yeah, you pussies want to party? <laughs> I got a real murder mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I actually killed a guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that Coke? <laughs> hey, it's Blue Shoe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's start at the end. <laughs> and, then we'll, and then we'll go Great. back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, Caddyshack came out. Big success later in life. Doug Kenny is watching a kind of uh, flop, get really bad reviews. Goes to a press conference. Uh, his parents are there. Um, he's high, causes a big fucking commotion. Uh, I think they had to like take him out of the room. God. What is the press Long hair, comb over, chopped to the gills. Yeah. Just to set the nice... Yeah. Press, press conference for the movie? Yeah, yeah, they're doing yeah. some press... They're like, uh, sir, your movie's doing terrible with the critics. Like, How do you like, feel? Like How do you feel? Rod Rodney's there. Like, it's, oh, it, it, God. Yeah, a bunch of the cast are there. Did Rodney open at least? No, no, they're all they're all they're all like sitting in chairs, like ready to talk about the film. And um, he he was he was you know he's coming at like a second film after Animal House, which broke comedy records. Yeah, it made the most movie of any comedy at the time. Must, yeah, that's fucking insane. I didn't know that. Well, I, the yeah. most money of any comedy? What the fuck? Well, uh, up until then. I mean, you think about it. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, no, he's not competing now with it. Obviously, he's dead. I mean, hey. obviously, someone smarter than us will know the great comedies that came before Animal House. Oh, yeah, fucking uh, Three Stooges meet the Wolfman. <laughs> it's a mad, 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 yeah, mad, yeah. mad, mad, yeah. mad, 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 mad world. Um, I find it kind of funny. Uh, you know, whatever fucking Mar Marilyn Monroe was in that was funny. Yeah, something like it hot is funny. It's got to be a comedy. 
Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because like they did, they just like got like girl a guys dressing like girls. That's funny. That's funny. Well, not anymore. Dude, guys dressing like, guys dressing like girls. You can't Great. can't laugh. People been doing that for a long time. I know no. because, because we like it. Yeah. We, could, we, we had the sense not to let women on stages back. In yeah. The day. You know what a pair of balls look like in fucking pantyhose? That's oh fucking awesome. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's like a pair of tits down they there. Never look better. Yeah. <laughs> look, he's both ready to rob a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Put them up. <laughs> Safe's open. This is a stick on. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. a boner. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like when a goldfish is sucking up on the side of a car. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> Doing this thing. Yeah. Womp, 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 womp. I, I think you should investigate. <laughs> 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 this guy's nuts. <laughs> Time to feed the fish. They got the investigate on there. Um, but so yeah, so you uh, gotta suck the inspectors. <laughs> <dick>. <laughs> yeah. So um, Chevy Chase, his his pal, and um, Coke buddy, and Coke buddy okay, takes him to Hawaii to clean up. And uh, <laughs> doesn't really quite not, work out that not, way. No, they, well, I guess because they, they took the coke with them. And no, they no, they in tennis yeah. balls, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. at first they're supposed to be getting clean, and then it's like, all right, well, fucking, let's get high, right? Yeah, yeah. Because but the first couple of days, it's like they're playing tennis and you know whatever. Um, uh, they were. Um, where did you go in Hawaii? Uh, I went to Kauai and Maui. Yeah, so I think they started it in Maui, yeah. and then he went to Kauai. Mm. Yeah, Kauai is like the jungle, like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. the least developed. It's the Garden Island, right, right. So, um, uh, you know, uh, he um, he's there, and uh, he keeps getting um, uh, the, the they start sending the coke in tennis balls, which is also very funny, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. incredible, and uh, and then they're 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 monstering around, and um. His, uh, it's not really, like, I mean, basically his ex-girlfriend, like, she caught him cheating on him, and, uh, cheating on her, and she, but she's, you know, she's still concerned about him, she flies out, and, uh, Chevy leaves, you know, after, like, a week. Or well, he had to get clean. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, um, he, and, but, you know, um, Doug stayed, and, uh, he was going around with his, his girlfriend, and, um, then, and they had, they had great, great, great times. And they were talking about like uh, getting you know back together, what they're gonna do with the house, how they're gonna decorate, you know, all these plans for the future and everything. And there was she wanted she she was like I'm, she she was leaving, and he was like I'm gonna stay and stay around Kauai for um, location scouting for films. And so he had l- he had left his room, and they hadn't heard from him, and. I think she went back and was and was kind of telling Chevy like, "Hey, I'm still worried about him. Like, go and you know." And he's like, "I will. I just got to get this thing done, and then I'll go back." <laughs> I got a few more lines to go. And <laughs> yeah, I'll... then I'll go get him. I'm playing tennis all day, and uh, myself. And uh, so they um they, you know, don't hear from him for a while, and then I think the police found his um his rental car, and it was you know near some fucking. Mountainy shit, and they saw that he would have had to pass a sign that said like, "Don't go beyond here; it's dangerous." Basically, yeah. And I think that was where he took off his shoes and glasses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my shoes and my glasses. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's up from the Jerky Boy. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, he had like slippers on, and and so then people were kind of going like. Was he trying to go look out and like have better footing without these stupid slippers? Right. Yeah. Or was get a it a good view without his glasses in the way? Yeah. But then um, well, maybe he's uh, what far sighted, near sighted. They discovered his body. Uh, One. Uh, it, it not a very far fall. So it, this is where the confusion over whether it was suicide or accidental comes up. Um, because so, it was like thirty five feet. Well, it's a, not exactly like you're definitely gonna die. You know what I'm saying? He is a comedy writer, though. That yeah. is a funny f- a fall distance. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're not wrong, man. I got to give it to you. <laughs> he was like really coked up. Like, dude, I can fucking parkour this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing is, too, is that he had, he had such bad eyesight when he was a little kid that like when he first got glasses, like he, he saw so much detail that it gave him a headache. Yeah. Mm. And if you, you're... you're 
you're not like taking off your glasses to to see better. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it kind of looks like yeah, yeah. definitely. But uh, Chevy, of course, maintained that uh, he definitely definitely was accidental. Um, also, Chevy's the one that took him out there and fed him a bunch of coke. So, yeah. <laughs> so, could be that. Could be a coincidence. Hey, man. Go take a nice, no long walk in nature. Yeah. But Without your glasses. Tell him uh, what the joke is. <laughs> oh, so. I so, thought you were waiting to. So, what, no, no. I mean, uh, one of the writers <laughs> of the Lampoon, um, when they were talking about whether he, he fell or jumped, um, somebody said he, he probably fell while he was looking for a better place to jump. <laughs> 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 and, and and the lampoon <laughs> would um put a sign like on a like on another cliff thing and like it was a sign that said Doug Kenny slipped here. <laughs> I mean they are fucking ruthless. Uh, but also like Doug Kenny would have done it too. That's incredible. Yeah, I demand something like that. Doug yeah. Kenny slipped here. Yeah, it's so great because like George Washington slept here. Yeah. yeah. Doug Kenny slipped here. <laughs> <laughs> That's inf- that, I was like breathless, um, uh, but uh, yeah. So um, you know, um, well, now we'll go back to the beginning. <laughs> Man, you're really Tarantinoing this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what's wonderful about it, and, and the reason I chose to do it this way, Aaron, is do you know where you grew up? Burbank? No, Ohio, in a town called Chagrin Falls. <laughs> Chagrin <laughs> Falls. It certainly does. So, which makes you think he was destined. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not Chagrin Jumps. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Doug Kenny uh, was, uh, he grew up in Ch- Chagrin Falls. Um, I think that they were actually originally um, East Coast, um, uh, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts area. And the dad was like a tennis instructor. And so they had this thing where they were Coke like dealer. Yeah, they well, no, they were. <laughs> they were. They never, were never, they, never played once. They had this kind of like, um, you know, when you have, like have proximity to money, like uh, he's teaching some Vanderbilt right. yeah, yeah. to play yeah. tennis. Yeah, it's but, like, but like their but, investments. But you were still. In the in the caddy shack, mm-hmm. per se, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, that wow, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and so it it's like you can see all the stuff about class mm-hmm. and how it, it's going to feed into everything about it. <laughs> the caddy shack, great. One of my favorite lines of caddy shack. Uh, Chevy Chase here to, to to daddy. Well, the world needs ditch diggers too. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about not going to college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so a lot of this was was um um. Then, then they would go to Chagrin Falls, and then the dad is teaching there, and it's the same kind of thing. The mom is, um, you know, she's like the type that kind of like probably drinks a little too much, definitely on some um, Bennies, some yeah, or, 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 yeah I, think, I think it was uh, the uh, what were they calling black, black Bennies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. mom's little helper, mm-hmm. and. Um, Doug is is the second born to his eldest brother Dan, who they all loved. Yeah, and then he had a little sister, and Doug always felt like Dan's the golden boy, and um, and uh, you know probably didn't feel too good. Doug was named after Douglas MacArthur. Oh, um, and you know he grows up in in this very you know should have died on an island. Uh, he's because it's it's forty six when he's born. Uh-huh. So. The you know the whole like time he's growing up is is so baby boom it's ridiculous mm-hmm. you know and yeah. then going into the Vietnam War it's just so crazy to see the difference between those two generations mm-hmm. you know what I mean and everything they go through but Doug um he's you know at first kind of like just a, a shy quiet kid but he's he's the type that he's strange but he's like getting good grades and stuff yeah. as he grows up and he can kind of get into any school he wants right because he's he's really smart. And he, he's able to go to like this this one kind of preppy school or or this all boys um sort of uh Catholic school. And they were sort of Catholic. Uh, uh yeah, I mean it's sort it's, of all boys. It's not called a Catholic school, but it was it was called Gilmore. Um mm. huh, I thought that'd be girls. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Gilmore girls. Today. Like Gilmore Academy or Gilmore College or some shit. I, re- I really um but he um they said they said Chagrin Falls was like Pleasantville. 
just like the most fucking, mm-hmm. just the most uh, like you know, yeah, uh, so iconic suburban America. Yeah. Everything's in black and white. You can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he um, he he starts um, being taught uh, uh by this 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 really eccentric um brother um. They called them, we were all called brothers, the, the teachers. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, you were thinking the other kind of brother? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, given the time. Yeah, man. And this guy, this guy sounds like just a total psycho. Uh, oh, you don't say. What are yeah. these? What are it's, these? Uh, the power hungry, uh, uh, psychomaniacs in these religious schools? Yeah, let's see the, the name of the, uh, Brother Terrence. <laughs> Brother Terrence? Yeah. Brother Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just called Gilmore Academy. Okay. So the other place was was like really waspy and he didn't want to go, even though it was like ostensibly the better school. But um they were the Holy Cross brothers and um they had this um really strict strict headmaster. But the other guys, you know, they could they could be kind of an eclectic bunch. And um the 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 other uh teachers and this guy that they said was like uh, Robin Williams from Dead Poets Society was uh. Evo Reagan, and they he, they were called Mister. He, they called him Mister Gilmore, uh, which Gilmore Academy, uh. and um, oh okay, and uh, they said he was uh, erudite, sophisticated, alcoholic, Holy Cross brother from a shitty Nebraska cattle town, and likely a repressed homosexual. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it takes all the boxes. Um, they said he, nice. he, he sucks was, all the cocks. <laughs> he was a fucking crazy, like, like an insane English teacher. Um, he, <laughs> he, would, he done insane English. He would in stand, like, stand on desks to like make points. Um, have them all do assignments like write five hundred words on the inside of a ping pong ball. Nice. Um, and it, it's a good exercise. They said they said he was intense, uh, explosive, tortured, <laughs> um, and um, one day he asked them to write an essay from the perspective of an apple. <laughs> and uh, describing uh, life as a piece of fruit, and Doug. Uh, yeah, no wonder. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tell me what it's like to be a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so I, I mean, I'm seeing like those types of things are very lampoony. Yeah, right. Of. Yeah, like that could be a lampoon essay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, he gets mentored kind of by this guy, you know, and. Um, I, I love this whole chapter of his life because it's very, very beautiful. And um, D- Doug goes into this thing about this r- like really neurotic apple, and and it's 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 just like <sighs> fuck, man. I think I'm a pear. It, yeah, <laughs> it said it was funny, insightful, well conceived. Um, and uh, one of his other classmates said, "I didn't even know what neurotic meant." <laughs> And so they um, they become really devoted to each other in this like you know mentor uh, protege way, and. Um, Reagan would uh, would uh, get him into you know the, uh, like Graham Greene, Ar- like Ar- Arthur's mm-hmm. like that, uh, mm-hmm. James Thurber and stuff, and Evelyn Waugh. Um, I've heard of Graham Greene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or uh, how do you say Waugh? Waugh? W W U G H Waugh? W A U G H? Waugh? 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 I think Wah. that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't heard of her. Um, so, and he's starting to get this idea from these kinds of people that he he's, gets access to at this young age, too, that, like, that it's sort of like David Lynch in Montana. Like, it's like mm. the pretty American landscape, but something's amiss, mm. you know? And, um, and they had, they had, um, they, they, they trusted each other, you know? And, um, he, like, there was already rebellion going on there, but Reagan was, like, fucking pouring gas on the fire big time, you know? Um, and um, Doug, was therefore, also wasn't scared of him. You know what I mean? They had, like, a, a very much equal relationship. And then another teacher, this guy, Jim Sugar, he says, um, of, you know, this fucking kid... <laughs> Um, he was the most intelligent person I met, save for maybe three people. Wow. About Doug Kenny. And, um, he, re- he would read the encyclopedia for hours, okay? Um, his vocabulary was, was just... Of squeeches. Yeah, it was completely, <laughs> completely flawless. Um, and, okay. uh... Quite verbose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And he he was um he scared the other brothers. Like they they were like, How long do you think we can keep him on our side? <laughs> was what one of them said. About Reagan or Kenny? About Kenny. Yeah. Um and and he 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 had a good um like he was mannered, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he but he would go like real close to the edge without quite Blowing, falling, falling, blowing shit. Yes, very, yeah, very per- like perfect for Harvard. <laughs> yeah, like is he being extra polite or is yeah. he fucking with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, one of his classmates said, "I think a lot of the teachers were frighter- frightened of him. He was a lot brighter than they were." Mm. He fucking went in, and and one of the the brothers was writing shit on, and Doug just like fucking. <laughs> Uh, picked up an eraser and just like erased two letters, <laughs> and then sat down. And the guy was fucking furious, and because he he had written irregardless <laughs> on the board, and the students were like, "We never would have known if not for Doug." <sighs> we had to conversate with him. Yeah, the yeah. School you pay for too, mm-hmm. you know. Um, <laughs> and so they said like he, he was just like he was so kind and like he made you feel understood right away and just like you're his best friend too mm. you know like um, he also had a thing where like upon like meeting anybody he could imitate them mm. immediately you know and it wasn't like you know all the jocks but like it was like the class president uh, a jock or two the mm. fucking theater nerds the dorks like and he, he like really kind of saw value in everybody yeah. and this like continues like throughout his life where like everybody felt like they were his best friend you know um and um like that he made you feel understood mm-hmm. you know uh it was really fucking amazing um and one thing I really uh, kind of identified with uh, that he like, he was just kind of like, there's something, you know, there's something interesting about everybody <laughs> or everybody has at yeah. least one good story. You know yeah. what I mean? Like right. there, there's right. something, <clears throat> even if they some- can't tell it, even if they're not good at telling <laughs> yeah, stories. Yeah, 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 they still have. Yeah. John will yeah. tell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't always tell them good. <laughs> I throw in an or something. Um, <laughs> oh, you know. And, um. He did things like uh, he started writing for the student newspaper and he started uh, uh, he had this piece where he was like giving them shit about not enough school spirit. And so they all organized like all these events and then Doug didn't go. <laughs> and, and then they found him. And they found him and, and, and threw him into a swimming pool. <laughs> He's fully clothed. But that was the thing is like they, everybody loved him, yeah. And that was the thing too that they also scared the teachers where they're like, oh, he's he's not like they'll yeah. also get behind him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we can't let him write for the newspaper. The next thing we know, he'll be um, telling them that they're too religious. Mm. Uh, and 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 then he also, you know, they start calling him father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, or, and, and or daddy. He would be willing to take like a beating, like a literal beating, mm. uh, in school. Just to make people laugh. Oh, from the from the from fathers, the, from the brothers. Yeah, because yeah, they, the... they got the paddles up there and shit, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, one time he was in biology class and he just let a parakeet out of its cage, <laughs> and and then and then evolution and just like walked right up and accepted, you know. And um, dude, fucking spanking a fuck was he a fifteen year old? Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine that? Like, oh my god. And then he's got fucking pantyhose on. <laughs> his balls are all smushed <laughs> up his yeah. butt cheeks. No, it's like a goldfish. Oh, oh my god, dude! When the paddle hits the back of your sack, that no. back smack. Back, back. <laughs> dude, when the bullet hits the bone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're really gonna play it to the bone here. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the paddle meets saddle. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about really taking it into the twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about really. Yeah, really tugging on that golden earring. <laughs> Teeing <laughs> off and getting after it. Picture your balls. Um, and so he he had he had uh he, he was introduced to people like Ronald Furbank, who um had this no- novel called Concerning the Eccentricities of Car- Car- Cardinal Pirelli, um which opens with um. Uh, the cardinal christening a dog and ends when when he when the guy dies of a heart attack while chasing a choir boy around naked <sighs> uh, fun that's a fun book you know, yeah. well he died doing what he loved yeah, that's right so um he wrote for the school paper and then he he started uh you know what a mimeograph is it's like an early copy but it's like smells and like yeah 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 like um, and it was like they all the, smell. Yeah, yeah. It was like the first uh, kind of uh, um, fanzine, I guess. He did. He did a, a humor magazine called The Hall Crier. Yeah. 
Which I'm assuming means like crying in the halls of no, school. Well, yeah, and like oh, there's the crying, town cry. Yeah. Right, yes. Um, and uh, so yeah, he, he was winning championships of uh, forensics, uh, 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 huh? school plays. He was winning forensics championships? Yeah, like, saw, saw this L.A. She, crime scene. Yeah, well, what do you do with a sheet? <laughs> yeah, take it home, wash it. <laughs> Which one of the brains? It was filthy. <laughs> it was all brains all over oh. the fucking thing. Like Cheetos dust. Do you think he'd want this here? No. Oh. Uh, and declamation? Uh... Like like monologuing. Mm. Okay. And uh, so he. Uh, what else? What else? Real, happy, real swinging place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Forensics. I mean, it sounds like a fun class, but uh, what do you do with that? He did. He did. Uh, Kill um, people. Yeah. <laughs> he he uh he did like you know have have some some showboat too right where he did um Paramus and Thisbe. From a Midsummer's Night Dream, oh. where he like played both of them, hmm. and um, they were like at the at the, at the like the fucking uh, the the reunion. People are like, "Do you remember fucking Paramus and Thisbe or whatever?" Um, and so senior year, um, they they were uh, they were like the top five speakers are going to do monologues on whatever they want, and um, this is sixty four Spider Man graduation. Got it. So think about what's going on in 64 in the country, right? And so... <laughs> well, do you want to talk about Spider-Man graduation? Again? No, I meant like Beatlemania or something. No, no, like, no, no, like no, 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 no. I'm trying to picture in my head what's going on. Well, the Viet- no, no, Vietnam. no. I'm talking about much more in a social way. Vietnam. Yeah. Women's... Yeah. The pill. Uh, yeah. What, women's like, lib. Kennedy's killed in 62. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh... So, half 63. Times, Kennedy's killed in yeah. 63, okay. Dealey Plaza. Heard of it? What? So uh, in, the, in the auditorium, uh, there's, there's students, uh, parents, teachers, the Holy Cross brothers. Um, he gets on stage. He talks about birth control, abortion, uh, drug abuse, um, and everything he perceives was coming around the corner in America. And um, they, uh, everybody, everybody, it ends and everybody's like stone quiet. And then everybody gets on their feet and just like go fucking ape shit. And uh, like, like even people that didn't agree with them right. were like, just couldn't believe how good it was. <laughs> and um, they were saying, uh, you know, this is like where Reagan was just like fucking out of control happy for him. You know what I mean? Handed him the keys to the school. Yeah. Teachers lounge. They think you're a good student. But the headmaster, yeah. the headmaster, this guy, Alfonso Camo, C O M Camacho, Camo, I think no. is how you say it. C O M E A A U, E M E A U. Sounds like yeah, yeah. Alfonso Camus. Hello. Um, he was fucking furious. Um, he was he was not not fucking in the mood. Um, and um, th- so this was kind of like the thing where it's like, okay, well, let's go after this guy, right? And um, so in the hall crier, um, he had um, like they they uh, like the students would wait to see what Doug would try to get away with, like like it was like a like a coming football game. Like like what he could get away with in the hall crier. In the hall crier. They were like like just like couldn't wait. And so um Morpheus is fighting Neo. <laughs> he, he wrote yeah, he wrote this uh this, this Kenny's fighting Camacho. He wrote this column in it which we he would have sign offs now sign offs like Bye until next fish day, papists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Friday is the fish day. Uh, yes. If right. you don't know you about don't, it. And and papists too. are Catholics. Mm-hmm. Um and so he ended up doing a nickname where, uh, for, where he called, he called um, in reference to the Ronald Reagan movie, he called Alfonso Camo uh, Brother Bonzo. Oh, my af- God. After, after the Bed, monkey. Bedtime with Bonzo. So he was Reagan's monkey. No, 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 no. Reagan, Reagan was of lower uh, stature. Um, yeah. uh, Alfonso was the headmaster. Well, he was not, yeah, uh, uh, in, the, in the organization. Well, Bonzo was probably a popular movie around dude. that time. Yeah. You're the master of the hit. <laughs> uh, Super headmaster. So he, he drops that and... and uh, Camo uh, confiscates Brother. every single cop, uh, copy of of uh, and um, and the rest of the teachers were like um, they they were they were like they loved it yeah they uh, they were but they were like they were like this guy was just super explosive and um, and uh, you know he he hung out with some girls but they, like they were kind of like he didn't really know he was cool they were always, they were always kind of like dreary uh-huh. and. Um, then he, uh, 
he he started dating uh, this girl, uh, Gino Boriso. It's close to you, Matt. Uh, whose older sister was going out with his brother Dan, Golden Boy. Yes, mm. and um, and then you know they went um, they were you know fucking all, uh, all over uh, like you know they weren't really all over each other. Mm. Um, because one time he tried to feel her up and then she 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 broke it off. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's Catholic school for you. Yeah. Um, oh, brother. <laughs> And the teacher, one of the teachers, Jim, that would drop him off, he, he would, like, be invited in for drinks by the mom. And he, he could kind of tell uh, there was a good bit of distance there between them and Doug, you know? Um, and they were like, yeah, the dad was, like, this affable Irish guy, but you could tell, like, it's, you're not really getting in there. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And then, you know, the mom was like, yeah, come in, let's drink. But also, you know, it's like, it's just not. It's just not really that loving. Right. You know what I mean? Um, Good. <laughs> ah, the golden generation don't let him, of don't let him nuclear get too family. Comfortable. Don't let them get too comfortable. Terrible <laughs> advice. Terrible. Your nuclear family. Dad's working. Mom's drinking because they won't let her work. It's radioactive. Yeah. And um, his, his younger sister, uh, Victoria, uh, Doug talked about a lot and really loved. And... Um, but he he didn't really mention the parents at all, you know. So pe people were kind of like, huh, you know. Um, and so then, uh, yeah, he fucking um, he gets to to go. He gets to tour like every fucking university on the East Coast: mm -hmm. Princeton, Yale, Harvard, whatever. And um, <laughs> and everybody thought like, just he's he's gonna be like uh, somebody like Graham Greene, like you know, a novelist. He, he was, you know, it was very much um. This the, is gonna do something. The fo yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but the focus was definitely on literature. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and uh, so every, everybody was um, later. Uh, later on, uh, Reagan would commit suicide with a handgun. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Wheel. And um, the, the fucking. Uh, I was like, well, I did my one thing off to heaven. <laughs> this is a great. This is a great little anecdote. Just. Um, in, in 2004, um, he, he uh, the, the author of the book, uh, A Feudal and Stupid Gesture, um, which is by, uh, who God, God only knows who. It looks like Carp. Carp could be the publisher, though. Yeah, that's true. No, 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 no. Who gives a shit? It is Carp. Um, I'm not going to look up his first name. <laughs> <laughs> but he found, he tracked down Alphonse Camo. And uh, he's living in fucking Sherman Oaks of all places. Right? Brother Bonzo? Brother Bonzo. Mm. And, um, Brother Bonzo. Uh, and he's like in his 80s. And, and he passed word through uh, that he'd be happy to talk to the author. And so he, go, he goes to... Carp. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> See you Friday. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> He gets a hold of him, and uh, he goes, um, I asked him if he had any recollections of Douglas Kenny from the Gilmore class of 64, who had been dead at this time for 24 years. And he goes, I did not appreciate his sophomoric sense of humor. And he goes, anything else? And he goes, I did not appreciate his sophomore sense of humor. <laughs> and that was the conversation. And I've been meaning to tell someone that for 20 years. I've been years. waiting to get, oh, what a load off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> that is I, I'd be happy to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point, uh, Doug goes to Harvard, and uh, right there, we're going to just take a little old break. We'll take a little break and we'll be oh, right back. We wreck his stuff. And we're back. <laughs> oh, hey. Lady in a radiator. <laughs> Temperature's up while I'm going down. Oh, God. Man, I hate that song. <laughs> God, Aerosmith sucks, huh? Except David. for like one song. Yeah, there's a, no, I mean, a couple. I mean, Dream On's cool. Toys in the Egg is a pretty good album. Toys in the Egg? Which one's that? Is that got fucking like, dude looks like a lady and shit on it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that probably is the Dream On one. It's pretty. I mean, because I don't know it. Big black. Nope. Um, you was it big black inch? Was it? I forget. Big no. black inch. Was second like my big black? My <laughs> big black inch. Look, it's a gangrenous. <laughs> I know it's a good album. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. Inches aren't big. 
is the weird thing. No, it's about a oh, 10 inch. The record. That, oh, the, 10 inch. That that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. 10's pretty big. Yeah. 10's big. Um so yeah, he he uh he heads off to Harvard, uh, our, our Dougie, Doug Kenny. Uh-huh. And um, you know, Oh, I did not. I did not mention. Uh, so in high school, his brother got into a car accident, and then he discovered his brother had um, three legs, a bad kidney disease, oh. and uh, he had like spina bifida when he was young. And so the golden boy had spina bifida, and then and then it, and then it became like this kidney disease, and um, and he died. Thank God he got that. Oh, and so Doug, God took the wrong brother, <laughs> and that's kind of the, the vibe. Yeah. He he actually told his friends he he really thinks. They they wanted it. they pref- they would have preferred it, it to be you. It should have been you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a parent, uh, <laughs> just well, if I'd like any of my kids to die in a car accident, I prefer if it wasn't that one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what, you want to pass along the fucking nephritis <laughs> and, and spina bifida on to the next generation? Come on. So the, the, you know, and like so the the vibe is like basically like, you know. And and the vibe with the parents is like they're also just not going to understand. They're definitely not going to understand the humor thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, they keep saying irregardless. <laughs> no, no, no. That was one of the teachers. I know. No, the they probably said it too. Thing, you know? <laughs> but yeah, so they were just kind of like they they weren't silly at all. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, I think there was you know some tension there. There was some explosive situations at home, maybe with alcohol involved between the mom and dad. Are you, you're saying the uh, the nuclear family that is uh, much uh, much hyped, lauded uh, in America, American history is uh, um, is uh, not hasn't been looked into that hard, and the the, the myth remains. Are you saying is that what you? That's exactly huh, what I'm that's telling you. Very, huh, that's so weird. It was a totally normal generation group from them. So, I, so this was actually the quote from... Uh, I think it's uh, nuclear family. <laughs> nu- 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 nuclear power. Um, this is the quote from a friend at Harvard um, that he talks about. He, he quickly made friends. His basic goals were uh, to get into the Harvard lap- Lampoon um, and uh, just fit into a new environment. And, and they were like, he took to both easily. And like, the Harvard Lampoon had been around for not how long before he got there. Oh, oh! It's it's America's oldest uh, humor magazine. Okay, so it had been there so a hundred years or something. Like yeah, but like shortly before he's getting there, uh, there was this guy that kind of took it and turned it around and kind of had it. You know, the times were kind of changing, and, and um, yeah, Bob Dylan's it. Uh, yeah, and, oh, he had the harmonica mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, they beat him to Shameless death. Murder. They beat, Shameless murder. They beat death. him to death. Senseless. Anybody with a harmonica, <laughs> watch Sorry, out! I thought you were somebody. Watch else. out! We'll actually take out the clown hammer yeah. just to do it. Yeah. Hey! Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what they think a harmonica sounds like a clown nose. So yeah, they just yeah. beat you to death with a hammer. I thought it was a clown nose. <laughs> um, Who killed him? <laughs> Put the hammer on your head. Yeah. The clown nose is an instrument, too, is a good idea. I think... Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, um, yeah, he, he just started developing friends, and, and his, his friend Chris Hart said, he didn't just pick cool people. There were hangers-on and losers. <laughs> Doug enjoyed their company and found something interesting about them. He liked the people everybody else tried to avoid. Um... And he, he just, like, exuded kindness, generosity, you know what I mean? And, um, but it's still a little odd, still a little hard to understand. Mm-hmm. And some, somebody, like, somebody said, like, he had maybe a kind of a flexible personality, mm-hmm. and then that made it kind of, like... Fluid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh... And so yeah, he he made uh, uh, the guys I, I talked uh, one of the guys I talked about Peter early, um, and that that friend group, and um, they they were kind of like remained like the closest friends like throughout his life, and um, he he met this incredibly beautiful girl named Judith Bruce, and um, they were like you'd ex- you'd expect like her to her to go out with Clark Gable, you know what I mean like. But she was very, very attracted to to, uh, to Doug and like sought him out, and um, they uh, they fucking they, they were um, you know just uh, the, the, like it was his first real girlfriend. They were like inseparable, and he had this thing too where he kind of acted like he he was he would take on like this thing of like I'm just a hick from Ohio, like I don't really deserve to be here because there's a lot of people that you know it's. It's Harvard, mm-hmm. yeah. and um, yes, mm. yeah, like and um, and he would do this thing too, where like he he would um, 
he would join these clubs and stuff, like these social clubs, but he would show up with like army boots on, with like, you know, a uh, pinstripe suit uh, kind of uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do things, but like it never really pissed off anybody enough to like, he still fit in. Right. Even though he was pulling some shit like that, like everybody still always liked him. Mm. I think, uh, um, I think like, I think right around that time, Dick Cavett was kind of, was doing stand up bits about that sort of the hick from Nebraska who went to Yale or whatever. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. But yeah, then they thought they thought sometimes maybe he hid his intellect a little bit around some of these people because like, it almost as if like they deserve to be smart and I don't. And then they thought like he actually acted dumber around them. Yeah, like which is uh, it's that's funny. just class <clears throat> talking. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's very interesting because um, like what what the fuck are you? It's doing? also like a defense mechanism and yeah, like yeah. it's kind of a secret identity like uh, kind of thing of like you know if I yeah I mean I, Harvard's not necessarily the place to do it but like. I remember, like, you want to just fit in. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe this isn't the right analogy for this point in time in his life, but I I, start, I remember stuff, like, in school. Oh, yeah, that, no, he definitely said he wanted to fit in. Right, where he's just like, oh, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm not talking about my AP classes or whatever. You right. know, it's like, that's, let's yeah. just talk about fucking Well, I think also, beers. too, like, he's, like, the <laughs> Sugar and Falls kid, and it's like, Harvard is... I, I think it's far more like uh, you wouldn't think it's so funny that you're at Harvard if your dad went to Harvard. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? And um, so, yeah, he, and he had this thing, too, where but he still fit in everywhere. They're like anywhere you thought he'd be out of place. He was not out of place. Mm. Um, he was always liked and 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 belonged. Um, at least, I guess, you know. But yeah, I mean, definitely a sense of fraud. From or, the heights uh, of Harvard to the bottom of a ravine in Kauai. Wow. He fit in perfectly. <laughs> yeah. What is the elevation? Of he him? fell, much to his chagrin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, then he, he goes after the Harvard Lampoon. Uh, Harvard Lampoon, 1876. Um, and the castle, its headquarters, was built with money from William Randolph Hearst mm. uh, in 1909. Mm. And um, it, it has... Castle. You use the word castle. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, those houses that you know they're, they're stone houses. houses. Yeah. Mm. Um, strange, throw, strange throw paper. In the stone house. <laughs> uh, uh, there's strangely shaped rooms. A circular library is housed inside a trapezoid. Dark winding hallways. Um. The uh, the third officer on the magazine's literary board is the narthex, an architectural term describing a passageway to the back of a church. Um, narthex? Yes. Is there a silent G in there? Nope. Cool. <laughs> Carved cement ibises, the Egyptian bird carrying much of the inexplic inexplicable sim symbolism in lampoon circles, sit atop the castle. The lampoon vi vice president is the ibis. Um, uh, it's ominous. Uh, there was ridiculous raccoon lodge names. An officer was a super sir. If they were a graduate officer, they were a late lamented super sir. <laughs> um, induction ceremonies involve elaborate ritualized pranks presided over by upperclassmen and graduate editors. Awful waffle. <laughs> uh, um, Awful waffle. Like Doug was asked to steal from a convenience store, but they told the cops and <laughs> and, <laughs> and the fucking owner that nice. like, hey, this guy's gonna come in and steal. He looks like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, he was fucking fucking scared the fucking shit out of him. Um, and uh, yeah, John Updike came from the, from uh, Fred Gwynn came from there. Uh, George Plimpton. Mm. Um, but there was a thing where like it kind of like it dwindled and it, over its history, but uh, shortly before that, like you know this era, it it had it had uh, it had risen by this time, but it got down to this point. I think around like the late fifties where its circulation was like 900 and it was just being sent to graduates. Right. And it was like, um, not even all of them necessarily read it. It, it kind of became like a, let's keep making jokes about the pores. Right. Sort of thing. Like looking down, like kind of sneering at mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Well, it really depends on what generation of students is, is running it. Right. You know, like, <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, sometimes people are, uh, they think uh, you know, beating up on the pores is funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. They go to Harvard, so... Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, 1959, the circulation was 905, made up of former editors. <laughs> they may not have read it, they just received it. Right. <laughs> um, 1965, uh, Walker Lewis became Lampoon president, and um, 
uh, a business board member had been the editorial candidates for the top job. And um, so he looked over the finances and he was like, there is no fucking money. Um, people owed dues. They weren't being collected and they were not into paying anyway. And um, paying is what the poor do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so uh, that, it wasn't uh, selling. And then Lewis began uh, just giving it away. Um, and, uh, so then this guy, this guy, Lewis, he's, he started going after, um, parodying specific things. So they, they were like, um, uh, Playboy was, was, uh, selling the most it ever would sell at this time. Right. And, um, and so he, uh, he went up to, uh, to an attorney on the, who sat on the lampoon board and, um, he's like, what's the, uh. What's the what's the, what are the risks of lampooning Playboy? Right. And he goes, you'll get you'll get some publicity, and um, so he mailed the, this. Lewis mailed a letter to Playboy, and he's like, we're going to do a parody. And Hefner writes back saying a lawsuit would would follow if, if uh, the parody comes out and hits the newsstand. And um, Lewis uh, visited Chicago and told uh, <laughs> a Playboy uh, person face to face. That the Lampoon looked forward to all of the press coverage such a lawsuit would bring mm -hmm. <laughs> to its publication. And then a Playboy offered to help out in any way. It's, it's press for them, too. Yeah. 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 And also, Playboy had, you know, funny stuff in it, too. So yeah. yeah. You know. To the point that Playboy gave them the guy that made their centerfolds. To do... To do some kind of centerfold. Right. Right? So like, if you're going to go to a printer that can do centerfolds... Go to the him. Here's the guy, Playboy. right? Um... They start going to Madison Avenue and um, and uh, selling it, you know, to to ad people and, and getting ad space, you know, and um, the Lampoon parody of Playboy at one dollar per copy sold out of its run of over five, half a million copies in five days on the newsstand. <laughs> Holy shit! The Lampoon Treasury, which had previously previously consisted of three thousand dollars discovered in a long forgotten check register <laughs> at the back of a desk drawer, jumped to one hundred and fifty grand. Uh, the castle was refurbished. Lampoon subscriptions now numbered between, between thirty and 40,000. It was at this unique juncture that Doug Kenny became an important player at the Harvard Lampoon, where he would meet Henry Beard. Familiar with Henry Beard? No. No. Um, he was uh, the guy that they, he would, they would um, go on to create National Lampoon together. Oh, it, it, okay. was, it was the two of them. Do, do you, do you um, maybe, maybe it'd be good for a media episode, though, to talk about that... Uh... The issue. Playboy issue. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, what was the cover like? You know? Yeah, was it hot? Yeah, they don't get into it. They just, they, I mean, it's fucking ibis with their tits out. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, tight pantyhose. Oh, blue footed boobs. Oh, blue footed balls. The balls smushed up, <laughs> right up on those st stick legs. Goldfish. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Fish fucks. <laughs> Um, so, um, Doug Kenny gets in with doing stuff like West Side Story parodies, but it's, it's, um, it's the preps against the townies. Nice. Nice. Um. You can understand that. And, uh, they had this, this formal lampoon dinner every, every Thursday, and, uh, it was, um, you know, guys in tuxedos and stuff. And, um, after they ate, uh, uh, well, they would cap it with a food fight. Yes. Right? Yes. And then they would go out to the fireplace uh, for jokes and stories and smoking joints. And uh, Doug was always the star. Um, just doing stories and like singing like ridiculous songs for like a half hour, like every Thursday. Uh, and people begged him to, to perform. Like uh, it was crazy. And it, it's like kind of like humor was just all over the place. You know, it could be very dark, very light. Like it was really bounced all over the kind of spectrum. Like there wasn't just one type. Um, and so Henry Beard is, is there at the time. And um, he was like a guy who straight up had a pipe in his mouth all the time. Right. He was played by uh, Gleason in the, in the movie. Oh, he was. It was Donald Gleason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, uh, they did a, um, a parody of Lord of the Rings. That's right. Yeah. Board of the Rings. <laughs> So you're remembering from the movie. That's right. Yes. And the documentary. <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> you saw the documentary too, though, didn't you? I did. I saw both. Yeah, but I meant. But that one was like five years ago or, or more even. I think it's like 2015. Um, I didn't actually uh, uh, see the doc. Um, you got to see the doc. I mean, you you will. Really? Drunk, stoned, brilliant, dead. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Netflix put it out, but it's not on there right now. Uh, no, not anymore. What a great service. What the fuck are they doing? I don't know, dude. Why, why? Because why? they don't have to pay residuals to people who made it. 
Yeah, but then it, at different times, like on Netflix, they'll have like things in different countries. Like they kind of like. Swap yeah, you got to fucking get uh, today's sponsor. Uh, Netflix VPN. Yeah. Express oh yeah, yeah, VPN. Yeah. Code word profiles. Yeah, I mean it's probably different residuals if someone in Britain watches it. Yeah, it's in the fucking uh, pound. British pound sterling. Yeah. So Henry Beard is Doing like great right now. Um. <laughs> You know, Henry's the kind of guy like where his dad did go to Harvard and he's from Manhattan and shit. You know what I mean? And so like, you know, it's wealthy yuppies. Turtlenecks. Like not yuppies, but I mean old old money. Mm -hmm. Blue bloods. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Turtlenecks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Un uncircumcised, yeah. Oh, excuse uh -huh. me. His dad went to Yale. I'm sorry. He was part of that whole Yale thing. Yeah. Yeah, well he's he was a rebel. He was a rebel of the family. Went to Harvard. Yeah. Instead of Yale. His father was uh, not impressed. No, no, no. The Yale Most humor displeased. is displeased. Yale humor is far superior. Sophomoric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's good. laughs> um he was also really detached from his parents, you know, probably um like the kind of thing where like they ate at the the long ends of the dinner table, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Dinner, um, dinner with Putin. Uh -huh. yeah, food gets cold by the time it gets <laughs> yeah, to exactly. Um and they and they were just they were completely different. Like Henry Henry acted like like an old man. Like always, you know. I mean he's got a fucking pipe in his mouth, you know? Cool. And like, you know, like you know, the elbow patches and shit, you know? <laughs> Corduroy jackets. Yeah, know? yeah. Um but he had he had the same kind of distant thing with his parents. Where <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Fucking distant, vaping and distance on the table. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I mean yeah, that was that was part of it. He, he joked. He's like, I never saw my mother up close. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to. <laughs> um, but you know, he he uh, <laughs> they, uh, he was he was more like on on like the studious kind of uh, literary side. Uh, Doug would always have far more tolerance for like pop culture things. Um, you know. The new music and he was just like, nah, man, like, you know, yeah. uh, I, he was, he was just definitely grumpier, yeah, you know. Um, but they became like fucking inseparable, and um, Henry was just a guy like he, he's drinking brandy, like you know what I mean, like, and Doug's doing like acid, <laughs> yeah, and fucking, yeah, you know, they're just like a total odd couple, um, and uh, and and Doug would talk to everybody, and he was far more. Reserve. You know, quiet on the chair, smoking his fucking peace pipe, right? Right. Well, the uh, the one of the bad guys in Animal House, the the leader of the uh, the ROTC group, is a guy who's smoking a pipe all the time with patches and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah um, and he and, and he, he was really he was really still very well liked, even though he wasn't like a, a ham or anything. Everybody everybody still really liked him. Um, and. Uh, they said they said he had like this 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 like uh thing of like almost like presiding over the scene, mm. like sort of being above it, right? You know. Mm, yes. Uh, they said he didn't he didn't, he, he would he would view uh, he would view friends as as a weakness, like <laughs> like eating friends was a, was a weakness. Friends are my weakness. <laughs> Your weakness is friends. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> What's my weakness? Friends. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess they just kind of like leveled each other out then, you know, yeah. it's kind of, um, perfect sort of match for doing what they did. Um, and so, uh, they, uh, they start fucking, um, just, they just start being the, the Harvard Lampoon. You know what I mean? It's, it's really fucking them. Uh, so yeah, um, so Judas kind of finds out what's go what's what's going on with uh, his parents a little bit, like you know, it's like uh, that the mom takes a lot of sleeping pills and stuff like that, um, and uh, his girlfriend, you mean Judith? Yeah, his girlfriend Judith, and um, so uh, <laughs> he he brings her home one time, and uh, she's kind of seeing that the uh, the dad is is, is like uh, kind of laying into into Doug. You know, um, just like kind of you with your straight spine and yeah. working <laughs> dual kidneys. Fuck you. Where do you get off? Uh, it was it was kind of like to like almost as if like my son is now becoming the people I taught tennis to and I resent it. Mm. But even though mm. if you didn't get, get the fucking good grades on the way, you would have been you're damned if you do. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, your dad's yeah. just miserable. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's dad is gay. Everyone's dad is gay. Everyone's dad is dead. Yeah. And everyone's dad is miserable. Yeah, and there's a phone call for him. They got to pick it up. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot guys <laughs> <laughs> Dad, this guy is saying he wants to pulverize your prostate <laughs> I think it's for you <laughs> is, is that like an insurance company or something <laughs> it, it doesn't sound like mom <laughs> she's asleep <laughs> is this something about emptying your ball bag what's that <laughs> Milk, milk them dry. Dad, who is this guy? Is this guy an order for extra small women's pantyhose? <laughs> Headed straight for your ball bag. Dad, another one for you. Where I'm high and tight. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he wants to give your ball bag to goldfish treatment. <laughs> Dad, the phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> is that who this guy is? Phone Bill? <laughs> you said it's two ninety nine a minute <laughs> for the first two minutes, and then one ninety nine after that. <laughs> Must well go see him in person, save us some money, Dad. <laughs> um. So yeah, she kind of sees the scene. Uh, the the battle's over. Like, um, he just doesn't get it, you know. Um, and uh, he's bringing home some girl who's who's like, you know. Hot. No, she's gonna go overseas to give like underprivileged women like birth control and right. stuff, and he just doesn't. Yeah. He's like, "What the fuck do you people believe in?" Mother you know Teresa's I mean? already doing that. Um, we're not the birth control. People. And uh, and Doug is yeah. like, she sees she, she yeah. sees Doug kind of like tongue tied for the first time. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a bad scene. Um, it's uh, it's it's pr- pretty pretty ruthless. Um, but um. So, this is this is kind of a really sweet thing. In uh, in 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 sixty seven, um, Doug is uh watching Laurel and Hardy reruns in the living room of uh um her her parents' uh Minneapolis home. His girlfriend's Judith Bruce, and um Amy Carlson uh bursts through the door to tell her best friend who just returned from teaching about birth control in the Middle East that she had very bad news. You should have talked closer to home because I'm pregnant. <laughs> ah. Um. And it was a big deal to be pregnant and unmarried in 67, you know? And uh, so then uh, Judith's like, all right, come with us back out east and... Um, we'll get it taken care of. No, mm-hmm. Just, uh, yeah, like... Um, so then they went to Harvard and she she lived with them. And um, um, so he put them up actually with other friends. And um, his, you know, a bunch of fucking guys, you know? And... Um, <sighs> Uh, so, uh, it's not all wasps, you know, like, there's, there's like, a couple of Catholics, there's, yeah. Pakistan, there's, a, there's, a Pakistan, there's one Pakistani guy, a couple of Jews, yeah, um, so Doug just pitches it to them this way, he goes, I don't believe this group has everything we need, we're not diverse enough, what we need is a pregnant female Midwesterner, <laughs> <laughs> that's 40 years ahead of his time, and no one, no one who's not, no one who's black, <laughs> um, so their spare bedroom, which is basically a closet, goes to her, and they're just like, yeah, cheaper rent, sure. Um, and so she was like uh, the cleaning lady, you know. <laughs> and um, and Doug was just like really protective. And, um, Do you think they put her in that closet because there's all those hangers? <laughs> Very good, Aaron. Gonna yeah, fall off a cliff, will you? <laughs> yeah, don't get any <laughs> ideas in there. <laughs> Let me find a good spot. Hold on. <laughs> um... And um, so he would come in like after partying at night and, and, and sit on her bed at, like 3 a.m. And, and just like talk to her and stuff. Um, and uh, Judith said he always had enormous sympathy for women as underdogs. Uh, and his, 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 one of his friends uh, took, took a pass at her, right? She's pregnant? Yeah. And, um, and Doug found out and punched him in the face. I mean, he really uncorked on this guy. He had a big swing and a miss. Uh, Tossing haymakers. Yeah, I mean. It's a real slobber knock. Let it rip. Oh, King! (laughs) (laughs) Fucking slobber knocker is the best word. Uh, yeah, and so like, and she would go out to him with all parties, and she's like, she's like the preppy kids, the nerds again, and then like, just like a uh, house party, like with all black people, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like just could hang everywhere, and she's just following along, you know. Um, house party too. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. House Party remake coming mm-hmm. out. No, 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 no. Swear no. to God. Anybody and, and, I know? No, man. Dude, I don't know. Kid, play? <laughs> no, they're not. How are they going to kill They're going to play like teachers. <laughs> yeah. They're going to fucking. <laughs> Ah, uh, they're gonna fucking play their bills, dude. <laughs> fucking thing. Play their bills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but then she would also kind of see, like, you know, uh, sometimes like him like going through his friends' like drawers to find like some of the preppier clothes and stuff. So she got a little bit of an insight to Doug, kind of like you know what I mean, having to kind of play catch up with this crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in uh, fall of '67. Um, Judas Bruce, Judas Bruce decides to, uh, to fuck a 26 year old French guy named Maxim. Maxime. Maxime? Maxime. That's how it is? Maxime. And you say it with she loves accent. fucking magazine guys. Yeah. yeah. And she, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she, and so she, uh, she met him on, uh, Harvard Yard, Doug, and, and broke up with him. Um, and he just didn't say anything and he, uh, he turned around and walked away. Um, and so Doug started dating a girl that she used to live with, whose name is Alex Garcia Mata. Um, and she had uh, graduated from like an exclusive school, and she was um very quiet and sweet, and um not not like really kind of like as as loud and you know feisty feisty as as Judith, um. Uh, at one time, uh, uh, <laughs> one time the guy, he, uh, he, uh, the French guy, he was visiting some actress out e- uh, in DC. Uh, and, um, you know, where all the actors yeah. are. Uh, well, she, uh, she's acting as a four, a four she was actually, uh, uh, she was actually, uh, a European actress. Mm. So, you know, so she, she's, she, all she knows is that he's coming back from that. So, so, so while waiting for him, she burned one of his expensive shirts every half hour until he got there. <laughs> Judith? Uh, yeah, Judith did. Yeah. And then she went to, um, her old roommate's apartment and, and, uh, and finds him, finds, sh- find, finds Doug, uh, <laughs> Fucking slapping his ball back yeah, on oh fucking God, back goldfish, snatch. <laughs> and, and and Doug goes, oh, sweetie, what's wrong? Did you break up with Maurice? <laughs> 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 Just super cunty. So funny. Um, Amy goes into labor in the winter of 68. Doug drives her to the hospital. Um, and... Uh, he he got past security, even though he's not family to to to, uh, to greet the, the kid, and um, he uh, he tried to get the boy named after Sebastian Dangerfield, who's the the protagonist of the Ginger Man <laughs> by J P Dunleavy. Um, Love that book. <laughs> yes. Do you think that's why they cast Rodney? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why they, that's why they cast Rodney. For no other reason. Uh huh. Yeah, I kind of I was I was wondering about uh, that. I was like Dangerfield. Is that where that comes from? I wonder. Um. So Dan actually dies around this time. The older brother from his like kidney disease because and, and know, spina bifida. Yeah, uh, yeah. It enlarged his heart because of the illness and all types uh, of shit. Um. I mean, it sounds like a good thing. I've got it's, like, uh, it's a Grinch syndrome. Yeah. He's like secretary. Heart three sizes too big, man. Uh. But uh, yeah, he you know Doug loved his brother too, so he's kind of dealing with that. But then he's also dealing with you know this like feel, added feeling of pressure. You know, what yeah. I mean? The parents going, "I wish you were dead." Yes. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, it's a uh, nuclear. <laughs> some parents actually say it out loud sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh. So it kind of puts more more. Well, yours guys didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it puts more pressure on him to get serious, but as we know, it's going to go even sillier and sillier. Um, so they started doing a parody of Life magazines that would cover the end of the world. Nice. Uh, um, the nuclear family. Yeah, yeah. Was it a death magazine? Do they call it? Um, and so they they and and uh, it was it was just about the uh, I guess probably probably it was a um, the lampoon thing. Very nuclear time. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all nuclear shit. Um. 
the, and and the cover was like uh, um, a guy smoking a pipe around like like a burning like right. was it just a fireplace left and no house? Yeah. Um, How to hug your children with, with nuclear arms? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and Henry and Doug are like just um, like bouncing ideas. And nobody ever saw them disagree at all. You know, uh, they really, really, really trust uh, trusted each other. Um. <coughs> Uh, Vietnam War is kicked off. Henry does some uh, National Guard stuff. Um, uh, Doug uh, does everything he can to get out of uh, get going in, um, uh, and uh, he he he, com- he completely uh, keeps keeps uh, postponing the physical until he has he has to go. You know what I mean? And um, somebody somebody uh, he 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 feigned like a a, a fit. In the waiting room, nice. Where nice. he's like foaming yeah. at the mouth and shit like yeah. that. And alcohol seltzer and shit. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the the doctor's like, "Are you want any uh, medications or whatever?" And um, and Doug said, "Just these." And he gives him some pills. <laughs> and um, give him acid. No, I mean like it's a prescription bottle. Uh, I just think he pulls some out of his tweed jacket. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, Just no, these. No. Yeah, yeah. 15 different hey, fucking... They're like, why? Do you want any? Mm, what do you want? What do you got? Uppers, downers? Should I be? Lefters, righters? So the, the doctor says, do you know what this is for? And he goes, no. It's for fun. He goes, no. <laughs> you did the... Oh, yeah. Do you know what this is for? <laughs> no. Birth control pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, I'd be very interested in this if you weren't already 4F because of your eyesight. Nice. <laughs> and, and, nice. And... and, and, and the the fucking the medication the medication was was like for for a friend's epileptic dog <laughs> <laughs> I got dog seizures doc <laughs> seven times as worse as people seizures you gotta put a bone in my mouth <laughs> I might bite my fucking prodigious tongue off um I'm quite loquacious <laughs> and verbose. <laughs> Even more, even more. I'm taking him. So around this time, uh, the um, the life parody isn't doing as well as the the Playboy issue, and um, this is when they start like uh, heading to New York to gar- start like moving some ad sale stuff, and and they have like crazy costs. I don't know what the fuck all their costs could be. You know what I mean? Food fights on every Thursday might be yeah, one I, of them. They're wearing might, tuxedos. Might be one. Oh yeah, food fights with tuxedos on. Yeah. So um. Around this time, uh, Maddie Simmons comes into the picture. Uh, Maddie Simmons was uh, the publisher in New York that um, it was told, uh, you know, his magazine wouldn't make it when it was Weight Watchers. Right. And he had seen some success. Um, but he was looking to uh, expand. And he didn't have any Ivy League background at all, but he got into publishing. And uh, the uh, mutual friend... Uh, uh, Rob Hoffman, uh, they were, um, they were, they were, they, they were the, uh, the, maybe the only Jews in the scene. <laughs> um, but, um, Matty, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was ready to take a gamble on something. And, um, they had all these, these costs, um, from the life issue. And, uh, basically it was like, uh, let's take on uh, this this publisher, and he wanted to take a gamble on a humor magazine. He was into it, right. you know. For Christ's sake, I make a magazine for fat people. Yeah, of I course, mean, I'm gonna want a humor <laughs> yeah, magazine. I need to laugh. And he kind of got that something was ready for this in the baby boom era. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because again, like there was nothing between Mad and uh, uh, you know the New Yorker, mm-hmm. and this would kind of go right in there. You said this was '67. This is 67, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So, like, 68 Mod Squad, you know, the TV is changing, the Smothers Brothers, and... For yeah. sure, around yeah. That, around that time. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he heard about these Harvard kids that uh, their life parody needed help on the business end, and um, so that's that's kind of when they got their uh, their first meeting with, uh, with Maddie Simmons, and... Um, Doug and Henry were still living on um, stipends from the Lampoon, and uh, the, that's when they did uh, the Board of the Rings. And this uh, is like when they're like seniors at Harvard. Yeah, yeah. And it's still just the Harvard Lampoon. Yes, correct. Right. And um, that that Lord of the Rings would sell seven hundred fifty thousand copies. 
Hey. Wow, that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, and so it gave, it gave the, the Lampoon a bunch of money, which, uh, which like, I mean, I, first, I don't know what they were doing with this life parody, but it was like 200 grand in debt. Um, well, they weren't making money on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's kind of where uh, Simmons came in to to save him, and uh, they had they had this um, they had this meeting, and um, you know th- these guys just don't come from the same place. Like these are, you know, New York Jews, and then there's these two fucking psychos from Harvard, you know. Um, and so were, this is one of the things where they had like the meeting where like they were they were you know <laughs> they were kind of. Um, they were they were going around to other publishers and they would be like Humor Magazine and then they would be like yeah no we're not really thinking and so then he would immediately go into uh um okay what about this okay forget the Humor Magazine he goes this sandwiches magazine about sandwiches about people that have sandwiches for every meal and he just goes on and on and on about sandwich magazine everything this and they were just going are you serious he's like no. <laughs> You know, but he would do that kind of thing all the time, where he would start reading from a book and then begin imp- improvising, and nobody could tell where the line was. You know uh-huh, what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take one more quick break, and, I, and we'll be right back. I'm going to get another drink. Hey, wow. and we're back. The boys are back. Oh. <laughs> the fat boys are back. Mm-hmm. So, you know song? <laughs> I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh. I know you love hearing that. <sighs> Not as much as like I, I like hearing I'm right. <laughs> it's basically right right at the um right at the time that the life parody uh is losing money mm-hmm. and where the um the and and they've also done that Lord of the Rings book, that's where it becomes National Lampoon. Right. Oh, well, they decide to take it because the Harvard Lampoon then stays an institutional paper in Harvard. Wait, right. I don't, yeah, I don't know if you ever defined that though. I was going to ask when did it? No, he he asked. Uh, yeah, I asked, uh, and that's why he made he had a mea culpa. Okay, okay. that's why I had a okay. major meltdown. He, he, well, I didn't. He, ask he did. What, he, we you know it was a brave brave stand that he took to admit when it was. But wrong. yeah, the we, um, don't, we don't like to do it. We don't like to no, correct because like because no. like you know the Harvard Lampoon's going to stay around and like Conan O'Brien's going to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It stays, and they're not going to get paid. But they were deciding to make a nationally circulating independent newspaper. Uh, yeah, and news, I mean, I mean uh, magazine. magazine yeah, you know yeah. that the fucking the, uh, Board of the Rings, too? Like, when the movies came out, it had a resurgence. Yeah. Space. Like, it's oh, fucking, okay. fucking crazy, dude. Like, I mean, 750000 in, in that time is yeah. fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, Never mind the porn parodies that would come <laughs> later. And I think, like, as, like they, got, they got paid, like, they said, like, most of the money was just, was just recouping... Food fight money for the for yeah. the lampoon uh, yeah. for the life parody, right. and then they they got a trip to the Virgin Islands and forty five hundred dollars each, Beard and and, and Doug. Um, that's pretty that's nice, honestly, for a college student in sixty seven. So nice. so then um like, yeah you know, we're gonna uh, sixteen thousand so dollars and they also go to class. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, and fucking dodging wars. Yeah, full time job, man. Oh, it, yeah. I'm a dumb guy. I, can't <laughs> I go. have the dog feed those yeah. arf arf. <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> you think anybody tried to say like, I gotta feed my dog? Yeah, <laughs> I can't go to war. Yeah, I can't do that. Who's gonna feed my dog? Probably <laughs> 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 oh, passed out right now. <laughs> he can't. Hands are all shaky. He's foaming at the mouth. He's addicted to stuff. Say it's seizures. <laughs> I think it's something else. <laughs> I think he likes the pills because they're tasty. Yeah. Who's gonna feed my dog? <laughs> the recruiter? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Shit. It? Yeah. Who's feeding all these guys dogs? <laughs> Nobody, John. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. So the dogs went to war with him. They're bringing the dog and shoot yeah. it. <laughs> Feed it to the VC. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. <laughs> um, so next time we're gonna pick up uh, the move to New York, and uh, we'll and that's where we get into it with Maddie Simmons and the Weight Watchers magazine, mm-hmm. and uh, we will go through. Um, the National Lampoon and, and its and its myriad offshoots and legacy mm. Mm. and um, lead all the way back up to the death of our friend Doug Kenny. Uh, I'm very excited. Hilarious. <laughs> I mean, uh, for a death, you know, and, oh, and, yeah, and yeah. the surrounding uh, yeah. 
the res- the results and the signs of it. Mm-hmm. I think well, we all done. I think I gotta look up that new wave theater too for some media shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah David Lynch a, is hosting. Yeah, and Doug Kenny, and they're asking bands like, "What's the meaning of life?" and shit. Like, well, it got real weird. Yeah. Uh, it's it's fascinating the story of like uh, you know I'm interested to see. There's so much uh, detail of Lampoon I don't know about. Cause I oh watched, my god, some of the I, fucking I, stuff is so. I watched the fun. the I watched. Caddyshack, of course, one of one of the greatest sports movies, and it's definitely uh, better than Animal it's House. It's way better than Animal. Yes, House. Yes, I think we talked about it on the Patreon, uh, but Animal House for its time. Yeah, you, know, you watch Animal House now, and you go, okay, well, that's uh, that's rape, and um, that's just uh, yeah, statutory. Yeah, she, she's lying about her yeah. breast size, yeah, 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 stuffing yeah. with the right, she, right, which is but it's lie. still, I mean, amazing Ten lines, age. amazing lines. One of my favorite lines from uh, Animal House is uh, the the the. Uh, there's like for some reason like there's that central almost central characters of the the guy and the girlfriend who um she's like stop go hang out with the animal house people they're really gross and she goes uh, you know she's going to say I'll, I'll say you don't go to the party I'll say you you're too healthy to attend uh-huh. you know huh. And uh, he does something stupid. She goes, I think I'm in love with an idiot. And he goes, is he bigger than me? <laughs> <laughs> Do they, you know, that's an evergreen lie. Is he bigger than me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but uh, to hear that upbringing, the, yeah, the Lampoon people have always kind of um, uh, interested me. But also there's that thing of like, well, they went to Harvard. like, And then, yeah. uh, and then well, like. Well, no, because then, then when it's the national, it takes in people from like all different stripes. Right, right. So that's, that's interesting. Right, but but they're the pedigree of the, Nas- of the Harvard Lampoon is is evergreen like the people that come out from the harvard lamp they always like get Alfred the jobs get, on like, the shows people, like created the daily show yeah 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 but it doesn't mean that they started as rich kids oh no not at all i mean it, the pedigree is there. the lampoon right, right. not that the pedigree gets you in yeah, yeah exactly yeah. I, w- yeah. I would say probably they probably do take in a lot of like you know way where you know uh but they what, what harvard would consider strays yeah because like doug, to- doug, doug kenny they said was just completely without pretense yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and like, he's, like the guy said, he's like, there was a bunch of fucking losers, and, you know, like, uh, he, uh, and, and that would like continue on in a way where it's like, you know, you can stay at my house if you want, even though I'm married, Yeah, you know, like, um, it was, it was truly like no, no pretension whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so that would very much come into the hiring of absolutely anyone. Yeah. And that's why the office was fucking insane. Yeah. You know? Um, and this is, you know, Pre Saturday Night Live, yeah, 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 yeah. lead into it, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, Lemmings, that, the stage show, is arguably oh, sure, so, sure, and sure. and and the radio show is almost exclusively SNL people. It's like Gilda, Bill mm-hmm. Murray, they're all fucking there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's probably you know slightly before that's probably like Firesign Theater, where like the there'd be the the funny records. Oh no, we're, the, we're we're getting they were all going at the same time. Yeah. There was uh yeah um yeah yeah, yeah May May and, and uh, <laughs> May and May and who I can't remember. Um, but yeah. they were all coming out like yeah. at the same time, and that was like you know drove them so crazy too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it completely changed the idea of comedy uh, in the country, like that whole that yeah. whole generation. Though. But you're very much right that uh, the country was primed for it in that Smother Brothers way, where you know people don't really know about the Smother Brothers, like but they're um, you know they're dropping a couple of jokes about pot and yeah and and gently. Shitting on Vietnam War, uh-huh. stuff like that, yeah. and you know the, the tail end of like that we're wearing suits and it's in black and white. And it's now color, right? Right? Yeah, I mean color. La- does laughing yeah, amazing is, is laughing. going. Yes. Um, but this younger generation that grew up with the parents who went went to war, and then the parents who were like, "You have to go to war," but also like, "We're going to draft you," but not everybody goes. And we don't really know why this time. Yeah, and it's yeah. not. Yeah, you're not fighting the Nazis, or where the are we the bad guys? And, yeah, yeah, uh, fighting rice farmers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. It was, it, and, and it's a it's a far harder sell than your country got bombed, go to war. Yeah, Hitler's killing everyone, go to war. Yeah, it's like we don't like the me- the mode of government your government has chosen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, here's a country we've never talked about in our entire history. Yeah, and. Uh, now the French, the French left, and uh, yeah, the French left after a long war. Yeah, like you know, and, and yeah. we're gonna drop more bombs on this one tiny island in the middle of the Pacific than we did in all of World yeah. War Two. That's yeah. fucking insanity. Oh yeah, like remember. that's just fucking daffy. Yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that. Uh, how about that? Huh? That 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 uh, that dichotomy of like 
We're really gonna uncork on these fucking. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about let really it let it rip on Cambodia. Yeah, laying, yeah. laying yeah. it down, really unwind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lame stream. Like, not not listening to lame stream media <laughs> narrative. <laughs> lame mainstream media. But but like <laughs> like like that that insane dichotomy is like it's also such a like there's so many whirlwind factors coming together for making the lampoon such a perfect. <laughs> thing or all of these comedy shows such a perfect thing in that moment because it's an unpopular war and it's also been taken taken to this insane level yeah. that wasn't seen in the world in world war ii yeah. mm. other than you know a couple of nukes yeah uh but like <laughs> this sustained bad faith <laughs> war i know and you're going you're doing the math too you're going so wait the world went to war yeah and it was like five years yeah <laughs> And this is year people? eight with one country. Yeah. yeah, and how many people are dying? Yeah. yeah, and then you get a guy like Nixon in charge. And you're like, Nick, the guy who looks and sounds like that. He's the one leading us to war. Yeah, I mean, he's a cartoon character. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I kind of get that. That it's like it's already just that poisoned um, political atmosphere that you just can't be the president that lost the war. You know what I mean? Well, you, life hack, win it. <laughs> well, they you're tried. Never gonna win that war. No, no. Nope. Hey, every every reason they to even win that war. even bombed Dude, other countries to win it. Yeah, it didn't get, work. get a Doctor Manhattan type character. Right. Huh? Oh, that's a good idea. That's yeah, you should, you put should've... a guy in an intrinsic field removal chamber. That's a good idea. Have him become uh, you know yeah. a man unstuck from time, and then you yeah. got a giant blue guy with big swinging balls and some oh, pantyhose, oh, and he's oh, fucking oh, lighting up the Kongs all over the place. Oh my god! If they're good pantyhose, they're not swinging. I mean, he's got these big blue balls smashed up against his inner thigh. I mean, you wouldn't know fucking left and right. <laughs> no. I wouldn't want to. We're talking about some real edge of the tank aquarium yeah, stuff going on. Oh, watch, but... man. <laughs> Press, See, watch how it's done, man. <laughs> Pressing up against a bus window. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, Billy. <laughs> they got... Got like little babies like spitting up grenades and stuff over oh, there. Oh yeah, like Yoshi and shit. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just like Yoshi. Yeah. Just like Yoshi. <laughs> like that. What? <laughs> 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 super yeah. num super num tendo reference. Super num tendo. <laughs> super num tendo. <laughs> Yo, she just spit up a grenade. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. She's homie sucky sucky five dollars. <laughs> I thought she'd swallow. Yo, she spit up. She spit up. Yo, she bit it. <laughs> you got your pantyhose on? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we wear pantyhose, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, m m Mr. Soul Brother Bonzo. <laughs> <laughs> she said it was too boku. Too boku. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because then the guy goes, "Man, look how small this thing is. <laughs> goes, it ain't too big. Yeah, it's not like it's an Aerosmith record. <laughs> it's my big black inch, big ten, big ten inch, <laughs> and we use a metric system. <laughs> <laughs> Royale with balls. <laughs> oh. You know what, Amsterdam." <laughs> All right, fellas, let's yep. fucking tee off and yeah, get out of here. Let's fucking unwind, uh, kick up our heels, yeah. flip our hair back. Let it rip. Fucking let it rip, dude. <laughs> <laughs> rip them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip them, dude. Rip <laughs> somebody, God, I saw somebody just really quick before. Somebody fucking posted on this. Somebody I think I respect. Or <laughs> and they posted somebody like, you think, think you respect. respect. It, it, I, it was of note. And they posted, um, the scene where Hulk Hogan rips his off ass? the car door and the oh. guy Dookie. shits his pants and he goes, Dookie! Oh my god. It might have been like Mateen. It definitely- I think it was Mateen. It stopped us in our tracks when we watched oh, it. Oh, dude. Like the I mean, can you believe it was written by two non-comedy writers <laughs> on a coke binge in a Miami hotel room over the course of two days? I, I, I couldn't could imagine never, being I, written by anything else. No. <laughs> 
Oh my god, can you imagine doing coke with the Hulkster in a hotel room? Well, you know how much coke they had to do, dude. Boy can dream. Listen, brother, I got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to wrap the whole thing up. <laughs> Alright, see my brother, he's like a little pussy, right? <laughs> he's in a fucking neck brace. <laughs> you know, because he just fucking clawed him out and fucking... I mean, he really uncorked on this fucking little youngster. <laughs> you know? He let it rip, pal. I mean, <laughs> he, he fucking teed off on his fucking... Off on, on, his, on his C5 murder. I mean, he really got after it on him, Vince. <laughs> I'm serious. I'll oh. <laughs> see these mainstream media narratives. I mean, he's a real spark plug, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's got fucking spina bifida and kidney, kidney disease, but I mean, he's my brother, you know. Zeus comes up to him and he goes, that's my chain. <laughs> and, he, and he gives him the claw, right? You know? And then he really tees off. Vince, right? <laughs> You're writing this down, brother? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know how to use a typewriter. <laughs> Are you still sitting in there? Are you hunting and pecking over there, brother? <laughs> <laughs> when did the tennis balls arrive? <laughs> Shit, my skin's burning from the bleach on my mustache. <laughs> you said it was going to tell me when it was 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, remember when he, then he just painted it black? Oh yeah. dude, like a pirate? It was like uh, spray paint. Dude, incredible. Yeah, like that was incredible. so dumb. Incredible. Dude, the best. I love that. I love oh, the Bad Hulk. Bad Hulk, like the painted black. Mm -hmm. Like you are a like grease paint pirate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, that, and then like a pirate on Halloween. Yeah. Bleach white. Yeah. Walrus stash. Mm -hmm. And like the fucking Oakley Predators, like the the Men in Black sunglasses. <laughs> And then, like, the bandana, like, we don't know your bone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Brett Michaels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after being... Leif Garrett. <laughs> after being, like, you know, America's sweetheart. Because he beat Andre the Giant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you know he was a, in he, retrospect. He was a sweetheart, I think, from, like, WrestleMania 2. Yeah. Is when he was, like, first, like, headline champ or whatever. Well, he was a real American, you yeah. Uh, yeah, and I am a <laughs> the real American song. Uh, you remember the stuff he said? Um, Take your vitamins, say uh, your prayers, do your homework, listen to your parents. I think was the yeah. other one, something like that. Um, <laughs> then you just come out in like 1999. You're like, your kids can blow me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And honestly, a friend of mine will film it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> me and Razor have been drinking all night. <laughs> 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 Is that goddamn crow in the rafters? <laughs> One of us breathed in a fart from the Ultimate Warrior. Now we've been up for three days. <laughs> <laughs> it was all poppers. <laughs> <laughs> what, I flossed with the tassels on his bicep, and now I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm a rascal now. I smelt it, so now I gotta deal it, brother. <laughs> I dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> the warrior <laughs> denied it, therefore he supplied it. <laughs> I got the whole locker room on benzos, <laughs> black Bettys, yeah. uppers, downers. I mean, we think he's a righteous dude. <laughs> uh, that's enough. All right, let's go. Okay, good night. All right, I'm going to say good night. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Remember so? Good night, everybody. We love you. Good day. Star Beans Avenue.